Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Sklar with Fertility TV, and today we're talking about the MTHFR gene mutation. That's right, MTHFR gene mutation. Stick with me, I'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Sklar, and welcome back to Fertility TV. I work with patients from all over the world through my online fertility programs, my one-on-one -on -one fertility coaching, and here locally in San Diego in both of my clinics. And a common question, and actually the whole reason I'm doing this video, a common question I get asked is about the MTHFR gene. I had one of, uh, one of my followers email me and ask me if I could do a video specifically on this topic, so here we go. Um, so I want you guys to stick with me because there's a lot of information to cover. When we start talking about gene mutations and genetic issues, it's not so simple and straightforward. So hopefully you can follow me. And uh, for that reason, I've got my handy dandy uh, computer right here to help me with my notes. Okay, so first and foremost, many of us know, hopefully you know, um, that folic acid is a key nutrient for pregnancy. It's actually the whole reason why they started creating prenatal vitamins and why prenatal vitamins became so important. Because if we don't get enough folic acid while, we're, um, while you're pregnant and actually prior to uh, conceiving, then that can lead to neural tube, de tube defects and spina bifida. So this was the whole reason why there was this big push um, with folic acid and why so much of our food is actually fortified uh, with synthetic folic acid um, to help prevent this. So hopefully you knew that and you understood why prenatal vitamins were so important. But now we're gonna get into a little bit more detail on the MTHFR gene, which is um, a folic acid component, which is why I started there. Okay, so one in four people, so includes both men and women, have an MTHFR gene mutation. Um, and this can lead to a variety of issues, okay? And I'm just gonna talk about the ones that um, relate to pregnancy and fertility. So it can cause infertility, it can cause elevated homocysteine levels, uh, can lead to miscarriage or recurrent pregnancy loss, preeclampsia, postpartum depression, and overall depression and uh, mood issues um, uh, in general, okay? So what is it? Well. The MTHFR gene mutation is a defect in the MTHFR gene. I like to refer to it, it's not what it stands for, but I like to re refer to it as the motherfucker gene because it causes a lot of pe people a lot of heartache and discomfort and they're always um, pretty upset when they find out they have it. So um, a couple key things. MTHFR is a gene that's found in every cell of the body, okay, which means it's everywhere, and it plays a key important role in almost every proper, um, every body function that occurs. And one thing that we need to understand, and many of us don't, is that for processes to occur in the body, we have, um, we need enzymes, okay? And these enzymatic reactions allow one thing to be converted into another and allow the body to use the nutrients properly. Okay, I'm trying to keep it simple for you. Um, the MTHFR gene is a key component in one of those processes and it allows your body to convert folic acid into folate or methylfolate, which is the best form of it. Okay, so if, you're, if you don't have this gene or this gene is compromised in some way, you are not converting folic acid properly enough into folate, which is the usable form of folic acid. This is what our body needs, okay, to help prevent those issues that I mentioned earlier. So 40 to 60% of people with this mutation cannot produce methylfolate, and without this, it actually impacts the body's ability to produce SAMI, another key component. And this starts a, a, a vicious cycle, because this creates a cycle where the body needs SAMI to create things that you already know, like CoQ10, carnitine, and creatinine. And these are essential for the body to reproduce and for fertility, okay? So if we're not able to, um, if we're not uh, creating or having that, that proper methylation process, we're affecting other issues in the body as well. And what can happen as well is that this causes an increase in homocysteine, which can cause more inflammation in the body. Um, when homocysteine is elevated, it actually is impairs the body's ability to produce 
proper amounts of methylfolate, and it also impacts conception um, and a healthy pregnancy. So these are, these are things that are essential for fertility. Additionally, we always talk about antioxidants, right? So homocysteine is converted into what I call the superpower of antioxidants, glutathione. Um, it's the most powerful antioxidant in the body and that the body um, produces. And if you can't produce this antioxidant, then your cells can get damaged more easily. It's called um, oxidative stress or free radicals. They're exposed to free radicals. So if you can't produce this well enough, then you're causing more damage or can cause more damage to the body. So between both glutathione and SAMe being affected, these will have an impact on your immune system, cellular function, and repair and inflammation. So these are all things that are going on inside the cell. So if we can't affect those things properly, your body can't handle the outside stressors and things that, and toxins that we're always uh, um, exposed to in a, general, uh, in a general day, then we're more prone to aging faster and our cells are more prone to de degenerating faster, okay? So all of these are important for, for fertility, for reproduction, for holding a pregnancy. That's why I call the work that I do with many of my patients reproductive anti-aging because we're affecting things at a cellular level so that we can pro provide proper nutrients, proper enzymatic function, and healthy cells because those are the same cells that are gonna make up the cells of the baby that you're producing. Okay, so how do you know if you have an MTHFR mutation. One, you've got to get tested. So an easy one, which you can order all on your own, is by a company called 23andMe. They'll do a whole genetic profile for you. Um, you will have to have it interpreted, um, but they give you resources for that, so that's an easy one. Another one, especially if you want um, insurance to cover it, is just get it ordered or ask for your OBGYN or your healthcare provider to order. I order for patients all the time. And then what do we need to do about this, right? That's the key. If you know you do have it, then what do you do? Well, one, we've got to um, eat organic because we want to reduce overall toxicity in the body. So we want to get rid of all those toxins um, and chemicals that we might be exposed to in a general day through our food. So that's number one. Number two, avoid supplementing with synthetic uh, folic acid. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this because I think this is a key one. Um, as I mentioned before, our prenatal vitamins are low. The whole reason they were created was for basically providing folic acid. If you can't metabolize folic acid and convert it into methylfolate, then it serves you no good, right? So you have to be careful, one, of getting synthetic vitamins, two, the prenatal vitamins that have synthetic vitamins, um, and one of my, my big pet peeves when I work with all these uh, fertility clinics with patients is they always put patients on these super high mega doses of folic acid. And it drives me crazy, especially since they know in many cases that uh, women cannot convert, you know, 60, let's just say that those numbers are upwards of 60%. They can't convert uh, this um, folic acid into folate. So they're just contributing to the inflammatory process and to the um, the mayhem that's already caused in the body. So I don't like that approach. They're hoping that if we imp, that if we bombard your body with so much folic acid that at some point it's gonna convert some of it, you'll get what you need, but it's too much. So um, I like to just provide patients with uh, methylfolate um, and take them off of those synthetic uh, vitamins. Additionally, because as I mentioned before, a lot of our, um, a lot of our food is fortified, with folate, or sorry, with folic acid, we want to be careful of those foods as well and try to avoid those as well. We want to stay away from those synthetic things. Um, we do want to try to get it from food as much as we can from naturally occurring uh, folate. <clears throat> so uh, dark leafy greens, um, uh, beans, liver, which is one of my favorite ones, and avocados are nice resources for, uh, for folate. Um, and then because, as I mentioned earlier, because of its effect on those key nutrients, right, that it might affect the way your body uses some of those key nutrients, we want to supplement with some of those as well. So carnitine, CoQ10, uh, cod liver oil is a great supplement for this, um, and a nice antioxidant blend or glutathione in and of itself um, can actually be beneficial as well. So. 
a couple key components so that you can actually maximize uh, your absorption of folic acid is to avoid drinking a lot of, and regularly, black tea and green tea because it can inhibit absorption of folic acid. Um, antacids can also inhibit uh, absorption of folic acid. And then um, birth control pill can also block uh, folate absorption. So these are some key things that you need to take into account when you're considering um, folic acid or folate supplementation. And if you know that you have the MTHFR gene, then you wanna be mindful of that as well. I know it was a lot of information, a lot of detailed information, so hopefully you stuck with me till the end um, and you got some useful information out of it. If you want to be able to read what I just spoke, um, then check the link below, which will take you to my blog post, which will give you all the details in writing and give you the resources you need right there. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to find out when my next video is coming out, and I'll see you there. Congratulations, you made it through the entire video, which also hopefully means you enjoyed it. It also tells me that you're serious and committed about your fertility, improving your fertility, and getting pregnant, which is great. But you probably also have realized or maybe thought to yourself that watching these YouTube videos might not be enough. I mean, I can learn and hear all these things, but it's just not doing the trick. And it could also be overwhelming and stressful both on you and your relationship to start to implement and try to guide yourself through this process. Well, I can tell you that there's a better way to do it. A better way to implement everything that you've heard and all the things that you think might be good for you into your fertility plan. With a proper plan, step-by-step -step guidance, and my instruction and guidance, you can do it. And my fertility school, which is my six week fertility program, can get you closer to your goals of getting pregnant. So with my videos, my, my tutorials, and all my worksheets, I guide you through step by step what you need to be doing to get pregnant and make your own fertility plan. If getting pregnant has been harder for you than you thought, has taken way more time than you expected, and is causing too much stress on your relationship, then My Fertility School might be for you. Click on the link to take you to all the information you need to learn about My Fertility School. If you want more information about it and to see if it's the right fit for you, click right here.